Praise the Lord. My mother had a big mouth and I have a bigger one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, I'd like to thank my pastor, Reverend Wayne Gordon, uh, who has been a mentor and friend to me since I was a hard-headed little boy and now I'm a hard-headed big boy. And I'd like to thank Dr. John Perkins and Di Noel Castellanos and all of you here. Like I said, it's both an honor and privilege for me to be here. We're going to talk about uh, technology. I'm not going to get into all of the great details of the internet and all that stuff. I'm going to be talking about some things that ministries can be doing in the arena of technology. And so we're going to get right into it because we don't have much time. Uh, the, the premise of this, of our time together, is that technology can make your ministries more efficient and effective and sustainable. And uh, we want our ministries to be able to be all those things. We want to be able to have them live beyond our lives. Um, and so, and technology will help you to be able to do that. Um, the time that you spend looking for stuff and recreating stuff, if you had uh, technology in place, you won't have to be finding the, the file over and over and over again because you can have an electronic version of it. And so, we're going to talk about some of those things that's going to help make your lives uh, more effective. And one of the first things that we'll talk about is a, a local area network. One of the things that we have at our office is both a local area network and a wide area network. And I'm not going to get into all the details of what that means, but what it does for us practically are several things. One of them is that it gives you an opportunity for file sharing. And what that means is I can sit at my desktop and I can work on a document and then send it to someone else in my office. We have 15 folks on our staff and they can work on a document. So if you're doing a proposal and if you're working on it jointly, you know, many people can touch that document and add value to it, but it's stored locally on the server. And so you don't have to print all that stuff out and cut and paste and edit. We can all work on the document at the same time. It cuts down on, it helps us save time and not waste time and be a lot more efficient. The other thing that our network allows us to do is that we can back up important documents. A few years ago, before I started backing stuff up, we lost all of our financial information for one year. System crashed, as they do, and because we weren't backing it up properly, we did not have, we had to recreate a bunch of stuff. And so now on our server, we have backup systems in place so that a lot of our stuff gets stored on the server now. A lot of our most important files get stored there, but they always get backed up. So as we're, rec as we're creating documents and working on them jointly and sharing information, we have the ability to back it up. And that's critically important because, you know, folks, uh, if you're organized or unorganized, folks lose stuff. Uh, we do some work with the city of Chicago and they consistently, I think they purposefully <laughs> lose our files all the time. And so we have to replicate stuff many times over and over again and so that's helpful. Email, a lot of you use email. Uh, because of our, our system, we have internal email and that makes a huge difference in terms of us sending documents to one another and each just actually finding out if people are available for meetings. Once you start growing, you want to be able to know, you know, can I meet with this person during this time period? And group scheduling as well is something else that we're able to do because of this network. So I can look, sit down at my computer and figure out whether somebody is free at a certain time because I have the ability to do that. Now, you can do that both in shop and also with people at other offices. So we can work, basically have a virtual office because I can be at home or at work at my desk and know what other folks are working on throughout the office. Finally, and most importantly, is the ability to have remote access. Because of the network that we have, I can basically be here in New York, take a phone jack, plug it into my laptop, dial into our server, pick up documents, pick up email, pick up those kinds of things. Don't have to be present, so I can have a virtual office just as if I was there. So those are some of the things that technology affords us the opportunity to do, which I believe is going to make us more competitive. A lot of people are competing for resources, believe it or not. When you all are going to funders for proposals, guess what? There's other people going to. And so the, to the extent that you can begin to have your ministry be as effective and efficient as business with resources dwindling, that's going to make you more, more desirable for folks to be in a position to want to fund you. The next thing we're going to talk about is a personal information management system. And for some of you, some folks here, this stuff will be old hat. For some folks, it'll be brand new. It gives you the ability to do a calendar, 
with repeated appointments. How many of you still keep your calendar information in a, in a paper, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a, even one of my staff, she's raising her hand real tall. We're trying to, conf she hasn't yet been converted. But many folks are still carrying their calendar around. I have the ability to do all of that on my computer and instead of scheduling that appointment that I have with people, I meet with my staff every week. So I meet with a staff person every week for one hour meeting. I schedule that for the whole year. I do that one time. I'm not writing that over and over and over again. We meet the first Tuesday of the month or we meet every Tuesday at nine o'clock. It's scheduled for the whole year. So I'm not repeating that stuff over and over again. To-do lists, that how many of you keep to-do lists in your handheld stuff? How many of them are prioritized, right? In terms of what's the, you know, if you've done the Franklin Planner system, what's a one or two or three? To have the ability to be able to prioritize your to-do list and also, more importantly, have an alarm ring to let you know that your to-do stuff is due. By having the, electronically now what I can do is I can have a reminder a week in advance, you know what, you have this to-do item that's due in a week. You have a proposal that's due, a llama ring to tell me it's due in a week, you need to jump on it. Because I have something electronic that's a reminder for me, I have the ability to do that and not just let it pass by and be like, I, I dropped the ball. Address book, also with categories. How many of you keep your address book and have to update your address book because you keep it you know, in a nice file or in a Rolodex all the time. How many of you still carry that stuff around with you? Pastor Gordon has the entire CCDA database on his Palm Pilot. So he can carry his address book, for all of you, around in something about this size. I got your number. <laughs> We're gonna talk about Palm Pilots and, and Palms and handhelds in just a second, but I have the ability to have 780 phone numbers, addresses, email things, in my laptop at me, with me, wherever I go. And have the ability to be able to look that up and also be able to merge that information into a document. Don't have to retype it over and over again. I can merge it right into a document. Call management, how many of you keep a call log? How many of you keep a log of your calls? And you write those down, well, that's part of your to-do list. Again, with technology, you can begin to do that. Anniversaries, how many of you keep track of anniversaries? You have to do all that, you know, you gotta write it down. Again, anniversary, put it in one time. My wife's birthday, anniversaries, kids' birthdays, all that is done one time in perpetuity. And finally, a memo function. I'm gonna take a quick look at what that looks like so you'll know what I'm talking about. Pull this up. This is Lotus Organizer. And basically what it can do, you'll notice those pink bars on the 16th and also the pink bar on the 17th and 18th. That tells me the CCDA conference is this week. So once I know when it is, next year, it will highlight what those dates are so that I'll, they'll already be marked. In addition to that, you'll notice on Thursday the 16th, this top right hand one, you can't read it real well because of the resolution, but there's some stuff in red at the top. It says, call Richard Nelson. That's a pastor that I'm supposed to be calling. It's in red because I haven't done it yet. So that's again a to-do item that it automatically reminds me. Every time I pull up my calendar, it will give me different color codes in terms of what I need to be doing. All the other stuff is in green. Those are to-do items because they're not yet due. If it was red, it would tell me this is overdue. You should have gotten this done by now. So, and also there's a call log all at the same, all that information is in one place, not in the Rolodex over here, in the computer over here, in the date book over here. It's all centralized and in one place, which helped me manage my time and be a lot more efficient and effective. Handhelds. This little small device here, this is a handspring visor. Palm also was created by a guy named Jeff Hawkins and his partner Donna Dubinsky. They created the software and basically most of the patent for this Palm. They left Palm and went to start this other company called Handspring. It's an incredible device. It does all the stuff that I just talked about in terms of the calendar and to-do list and you know, repeating functions, but it also is, you know, it's, it's programmable. So when I go to a closing, and we do a fair amount of closings, sometimes I need an HP 12C calculator. Some of you know what that is. Well, instead of me buying a separate HP 12C calculator, I just have a program here 
that'll cost me $30 and it will emulate what an HP-12C calculator can do. So I don't need an HP-12C and a Palm. In addition, I have all of my phone numbers, those 780 phone numbers that I talked about that are on here, also on here. So if I'm out in the field and I don't have this with me, I can call folks. In addition to that, they just came out with a device that will attach to this that's a wireless phone. So instead of me dialing their phone number, I look them up, I press their name, the phone dials it, and or if I want to email someone, it can do all of that right here as well. So technology will make you, you know, I, and we live in a world that's full of a lot of information. And it's moving down from the big mainframe computers to the desktops to handhelds. And so it gives you the ability to be able to do all of that stuff and have it all at your fingertips. Quickly, financial statements. How many of you are still, how many of you are using something like a, a Microsoft Excel to do financial statements? And how many of you are still kind of doing that by hand? How many people are not even, some people are embarrassed to even admit that they're still kind of doing some of this stuff by hand? Well, to have the ability to have even a simple program like QuickBooks, you have an audit trail, you have the ability to sort. If you've got to find that check number from a year and a half ago or a year ago and you know you spent it but you didn't know where it is, to be able to have all of your financial stuff electronic is much better than keeping all these manual records all the time. Um, electronic bill payment. How many of you pay your bills electronically? How many of you know that you can pay your bills electronically? <laughs> right. That you can basically, from my desktop, Send, I pay all of my bills at home electronically. I pay my gas bill, light bill, my mortgage, my insurance bill, all that stuff. I sit down at my desktop. Instead of licking a stamp, you know, it's all, and, and in addition, because you got to do the work either way. You got to enter it into your checkbook. You got to write the check. You got to put it in the envelope. You got to lick the stamp. You got to put it on there. You can do all that electronically in one place with Quicken or QuickBooks. And then send it electronically. No stamps. You got an audit trail. It's stored, updates your balance, all of that in one place instead of having, again, all these different systems. Payroll information, you can do that electronically. You can also do, uh, you know, just having more timely financial reports and bank reconciliations. How many of you reconcile your bank statements by hand? See? All of that stuff can be done electronically. Finally, being able to have this helps you to be able to recruit and helps to be able to retain staff. I mean, I think it's important, particularly with where young folks are today who are looking to work in ministry, you know, they're gonna wanna work at a place that's a little bit progressive. They wanna work in a place where they can use their gifts and their talents and their skills for the kingdom. And one of their criteria will be, they wanna have web pages and they wanna have all this other stuff, and you don't have it, you're gonna be less likely to get the new talent that's out there that you're looking to hire. We've been able to create electronic versions of everything that we do. We do a fair amount of construction work, um, we've done actually about $29 million worth of development in the past eight years. And a lot of the stuff that we've done now, when we do payouts, we don't do them by hand. We have an electronic version, we print it out, it's an Excel spreadsheet, we tabulate the stuff ourselves, so we don't do a lot of stuff with forms anymore. Um, the other thing that it does is it begins to upgrade your staff skills. I think a lot of our staff appreciate the fact that they have all this technology and they, they want to work at a place that's pretty progressive, so that gives you all of those benefits by having technology. Finally, this is a, a picture of my third child. I have two kids, this is my third baby, which is our tech center. Um, I wanna just spend 30 seconds to talk about that. It's a state-of-the-art tech center. Before this, we had a small technology center of about 15 or 20 donated IBM computers. And whenever people donate stuff to you, they're getting rid of their junk. They're not giving you stuff that works. They're gonna give you stuff that may have viruses or have hard drive problems. And so we had to spend more money fixing the donated computers than it would cost us to buy new computers. And so we bought 30 brand new Dell computers. We use a T1 line for our young folks to get on and they can access the internet. And that may sound uh, you know, interesting to some of you, but in our neighborhood, the only connection that our kids get to the internet is in their schools from the administrative office to downtown to transmit uh, attendance data. So these young folks, you know, the digital divide is truly locking them out. They don't have an opportunity. And so every day after school, school gets out at 2.30, at about 2.31, there are kids beating down the door to come to our technology center. It's brand new, state of the art, hardwood floors. I mean, we've done a tremendous job in getting it up and going and we're, we're real excited about it. We had to raise $200,000 from the Freddie Mac Foundation to build it and staff it. And so we're excited about it, so we use this opportunity because we want young people to be able to compete 
with their peers in the suburbs. We don't want them to be left behind. We want young folks to be able to, you know, to uh, become Microsoft certified and have A-plus certification and all those things so they can compete in this new economy. And uh, we believe that this is really about economic justice, and God is pleased with it. Amen.